Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> you might notice something unusual is going on here. This isn't a laptop, and for that matter, it's also not used. This is a brand new, and you can see it's still got the little protective plastic film on the front of it and everything. Brand new Dell Inspiron 3671. Also known as the cheapest brand new Dell you can buy that's still like a regular size tower form factor. They make one that's like 30 bucks cheaper, but it has like a slim profile. So this is the cheapest one you can get that's still a full size tower. This guy was a Christmas gift from my mother to my father. And at Christmas time, it was 400 bucks. I think right now it's on sale for like 420, 430. And there are a couple reasons why it's darkening my doorway. The reason we're gonna get into in this video is I'm really disappointed with the performance of the thing. It is whatever current generation uh, Intel i3. It has eight gigs of RAM. It's got a terabyte regular hard drive in it. And my nearly 10 year old laptops will absolutely crush this thing in just day to day regular computing. In this video, we're gonna give it a good old upgrade with our favorite thing to do ever. And you know that because I've done it, I think three or four times now. That's drop an SSD in it and we're gonna double the RAM on it. And to get in there to do that, we just need to take two screws out of the case, two fellers right here. And then the case just pops open, the side case. And now that we're in, I'll show you what I found in here before because I had to take this plate off just to see what kind of RAM and stuff we needed to order. Is this thing actually has a two and a half inch drive bay built right into the front of it. And to access it, I think all we need to do is pop these three tabs off. There's one at the top, just, just barely out of frame for you. Pop those three tabs and that whole front cover should just lift off. And that is exactly what happened. So it should be pretty minor affair to get the SSD actually put in it. And that may give you a little better picture of where it needs screwed in. It's got screw bosses and I guess just maybe two screw bosses and then standoffs that the SSD sits in. So let's get that thrown in right quick. And you all know me, brand new Samsung for life fanboy. So they work well for me. And you may be asking right off the bat of this video is, hey, why didn't you just order it from Dell with more stuff in it? And I looked at that. The total price for this 500 terabyte SSD and the additional eight gigs of RAM was like, I think 80 or $90. And just getting an extra eight gigs of RAM from Dell put you into an entire new class of machine. And I believe the price went up by 200 bucks just to do that, that this machine went from 400 bucks to 600 bucks just because I wanted to double the RAM. It came with extra stuff too that I didn't want, like a faster processor, because same story, I can buy one of those and put it in cheaper than they'll sell it to me anyway. So that is what steered us where we're going. And it looks like everything should fit nicely, I hope. Yep, looks like she's gonna line up real fine. It just has tabs on this side that the SSD slots into and then two screws. Uh, the fun part is I did order more SATA cables and have misplaced them, so treasure hunt time. Well, once again, the hoard is gonna provide. This cable I just happen to have in inventory. It is not nearly as high quality as the cables I'm pretty sure I already bought, but it's the cable we got. And if this goes like everything else in the world, since I dug this one out, the cables I wanna use will become apparent just as soon as this job is done, so I can always switch them back out. Here's a little quick fun one for some of you guys out there. If you're not too particularly experienced with this stuff, you may wonder, you know, how do you connect one of these laptop drives to a desktop PC like this? Uh, the SATA connections for laptops and desktops are exactly the same. That when they settled on that standard some years ago, they did the right thing and made the standard an actual standard standard. So all I need to do for my purposes here is get a SATA Y power tap so I can plug one into this into the power supply of the computer and get two powers back out because they didn't give me any spares from Dell. So in this guy, and some of these cables come with these locking features, some of them don't. Uh, I kind of like the ones that do. And because of where this drive is going to be installed, I've got one locking feature only. I'm going to put it on the drive end just to keep it hanging on tight while we could jigger with it and everything else. And then we'll go ahead and put our power Y on it as well. And we'll get that all connected before we bolt it in just to make our lives a little easier. Speaking of making our lives a little easier, since I knew this job was coming, I bought one of these little PC screw assortment kits. And I never needed to buy one of these before because for ages and ages, every time you would buy a new drive of any kind, they would ship you a little pack of screws with it. It was always way more screws than you needed. 
And after a long enough timeline of doing this kind of stuff, you build up a pretty nice inventory of stuff like that. And I did. I had a nice, like, coffee can full. But then one day, somebody decided they needed it more than I did, and it's been gone ever since. And these screws are just a little longer than I would like. They are threading in nicely, but I don't think there's enough meat in the case to get them tight without, like, being tight tight. So we may have to put some washers on them just to pick up some clearance. Because that feels like it's all the tighter I want to get it. We'll give it a shot and we'll see what happens. Actually, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and slap in the additional stick of RAM that goes right there. Because the SATA connectors are right down here on the board. And once we get that way too long cord stuffed in here, because it's the only one I could find, we won't have nearly as good of access to install the RAM. For your reference, this is Crucial DDR42666 Speed UDIM. 8 gigs. I went with Crucial because it was basically the most affordable thing that wasn't just straight up generic or used. No other real reason. And these are keyed. If you've never if you've never done this before, these little tabs are the locking tabs. You have to make sure they're snapped open to be able to put the SIM in or your RAM. And there's also a tab in the connector for like every one of these no matter what kind it is. There'll be a hole in the connector somewhere so you can only put them in one way I think I've got it oriented correctly and then usually the thing to do is just make sure it's lined up well there we go I can see it's in the notch and everything you just give it a nice push and sometimes you got to push pretty hard it's kind of scary and it should just pop down in there and those locks almost always will pop up on their own like yeah you can see that one's starting so I need to apply some more pressure to this side yep there it goes and then there that goes. Nice positive sound, clicky, snappy noises. That's doubling our RAM capacity. Now you can see why I didn't feel like paying Dell a whole bunch of money to do that for us. So now it's time to drop the SSD in it. I've just noticed that Dell gave us this nice wire clip in here that they've got the existing hard drive wiring stuffed into down to the ports. And our drive is going to end up behind all this. So I'm actually going to pop the factory stuff out and put our stuff in behind it and then we'll screw the drive on because that'll also kind of help hold the drive in while we're working. Just like so. So now we've got all our stuff in there and you can see those wires kind of holding the drive back. One thing I had forgotten about or didn't realize is they've got a 90 degree power adapter on the existing hard drive in here. And I had intended all along to just remove the cables from this drive and just leave it in here doing nothing disconnected because this thing's still under warranty from Dell. The less stuff that's on it with it being under warranty and everything else, the better off we are to get warranty service. So we'll just run it completely off the SSD. My dad is 78 years old. He doesn't need a ton of space. And if the day ever comes that he does, we'll just get the proper 90 degree power splitter and hook this guy back up as a secondary drive for him. Get our SSD stuffed on its little clips. And they actually are designed to go in like the side holes. So there are little steel tabs that point that way too to grab the side holes of the thing. And let's get the screws in it. And again, we don't want to get real tight on these because they are not intended for SSDs. They're a little too long for that, I think. Eh, feels okay. Let's get the other one in it and see if it gets snug. You know, especially this being a desktop, it needs to go from here to my dad's house and sit on his desk uh, probably for the rest of his life and never be touched again. So it doesn't need to be the most robust thing in the world. Just something for you guys to keep in mind out there if you decide to do something like this. Yeah, she's nice and snug. No worries. Cool. I just went ahead and plugged the new cord into the SATA 1 port, which was unoccupied for some reason. And when we get done, this wire routing clip is going to work out really nicely for us. And if you didn't get what I was saying before, I think you can understand now that this straight connector isn't going to work for us in the long run. Because it's actually up higher than the side of the case. And of course, the wires coming out of it need about another half inch or so, three quarters of an inch to be able to flex. So that's not going to be a long-term solution. We're just going to do that to copy the contents from this drive onto the SSD. So we move windows and everything over. I've also just noticed that this front cover is actually pretty cool. This side has a curvature to it, and this is the hook side. So it's actually designed to go in and then hinge on and off, which is pretty neat. So not a big deal at all to remove or reinstall. I'm kind of surprised to see a, you know, a, a super commercial vendor like Dell do something at all nice with their case like that. And I magically didn't break it putting it back on, so all is well. Ah, the joys of working on a desktop on YouTube. So I'm gonna go behind it, throw the main power switch, and we'll see if a bunch of sparks and smoke and stuff come out. No sparks and smoke and stuff yet. 
Yeah, this desktop does a weird thing. When it gets power, it automatically powers up and then it shuts right back down. So now I'll have to boot it again. Let's see if we can F11 our way into the BIOS maybe, or not. Need a display to do that. It's disturbing that there's no display. Let's see if there's an obvious reason for that, like I'm a moron. Uh, yeah, that's good news. That's exactly what we want. And this is a new mouse and keyboard as well, and they're wireless. They are working, that's good. BIOS setup, that's what we actually want to see. System information, sweet. 16 gigs of RAM, that's what we want. Got anything about hard drives? Yep, it's seeing the 500 gig SSD. And if you're curious, this is an Intel Core i3-9100 3.6 gigahertz CPU. And it is, at least this machine as it came out of the box is radically slower than my other stuff with way less processor. So we're gonna say exit. Hopefully it's all happy, happy now. Regular old regular boot. That's good news. It'll take 10,000 years, by the way. We'll go ahead and time it just for fun. And we'll do a before and after that way. It is finally up. That had to be every bit of two or three minutes. Uh, we need to, it's up, but it doesn't seem excited about actually doing stuff. A minute ago it was. Interesting. Again, this thing has performance problems, at least in my opinion. And my dad is old. He basically rates the performance of computers on how fast they boot up. So this is not acceptable for him. The first thing we need to do is go into disk management, get the SSD with a partition on it and format it and everything. Yep, that's exactly what we want to do. Initialize that one. Unallocated. So just right click, new simple volume, next. Sounds fine. Eh, I'm not sure how this drive letter thing is going to work out in the long run because it's going to be the only drive, but NTFS, new volume, yeah, that's fine. We, and we can change some of this stuff later too, so. Next, finish. BitLocker encrypted. Okay then. It is there. Let's see if Windows actually shows it. Yep, new volume E, Rapportize. Yep, right there she be. So now the trick is to move our operating system and all the software we've installed previously and everything over onto it. And to do that, we're gonna use Seagate Disk Wizard, which I've mentioned before. And the only thing you need in order to use Seagate Disk Wizard is you have to have a Seagate hard drive attached to the computer in some way. In this case, this is just one of my backup drives that I use personally. We're not actually going to read or write any data from or to this drive. We just have to have a Seagate drive connected to the system for Disk Wizard to work. So it is powered up and we should see it join the party down here in just a moment. There she is. So we don't need to actually do anything with that. We just needed it for Disk Wizard and I've already got Disk Wizard installed on here. So I already, I already made a full backup of this at my parents' house on Christmas. So it's already got a backup as existing. We just need to copy the one drive into the other one. Yeah, we don't want to start a backup, that's fine. It's complaining because I'm using the wrong drive. Tools, clone disk is what we're looking for. Automatic sounds good to me. Next, select the source disk. That is gonna be that guy. That's the drive it came with. Next, destination disk is gonna be our Evo SSD. Next. So I guess I probably didn't have to partition this before because it's telling me it's going to delete the partition. So eh, live and learn. Disk Wizard will do this for you. So we didn't need to do the disk management stuff. Okay. It's giving us like a before and after picture of what's going to happen to that drive. And I'll take this m minute to note, make sure you select the right drive. You know, I wouldn't want this thing to overwrite my backup drive. And we can very clearly see this is the half terabyte drive, not an eight terabyte USB drive. Proceed. And we'll see how long that takes. Huh, I did not see that one coming. So whatever BitLocker is, it uh, requires a reboot because the volume is encrypted with BitLocker. Please use Seagate bootable media. So I may actually have to format a USB stick to boot the Seagate environment. We'll see. It looks like, yes, that's what's gonna have to happen. And just for the lols, I dug up my first USB stick. This thing is a 128 megabyte USB stick. This is the first one I ever got. I actually got this as a Christmas gift one year. Let's see if it's actually big enough to make a rescue media. I kind of doubt it, but we'll find out. It's detected it. That's good news. Let's see if we can just build a rescue media, quote unquote, boot disk. Let's adjust it. Windows PE based. I do not really want to build that kind of... Let's go back. Let's go with the Linux, Linux option. It should be smaller too. Choose media destination. Lexar. Uh-oh. Need 605 megs. Oh well, we tried. Now we've got a good old-fashioned 32 gig stick in it. Shouldn't be any more trouble. Let's 
start this process over to make sure it recognizes the right stick. Let's go advanced, Linux based. Sounds good. Might be at that for a little while. So our rescue media is all built. Let's go ahead and just reboot this thing and see if it'll just take off right from USB. Uh, like it's warning us, we may have to go into the BIOS and reorder things. Restart. Actually, as soon as it powers down, I probably want to disconnect my USB hard drive. So I don't want it to attempt to boot from that because it won't have any luck. And it's looking a lot like it's going to boot off the hard drive. Wonder if it's too late to try and get in the BIOS. Yeah, it's going to boot off the hard drive. So in 10 more minutes, we'll be able to shut this thing down and get back to it. We're at the BIOS. Let's go into BIOS setup. So now up here it's asking me what we want to do. Seagate Disk Wizard or Seagate System Report. We want Disk Wizard, so we're going to hit 1. Please wait. Seems like a good time to plug in our Seagate drive, because I know it'll be looking for it. And it has been so long since I've done this, I don't have any clue how long it's going to take to actually do its thing here. Yeah, it looks like not too terribly long. Let's go Tools and Utilities. I believe that's what we're going to want. Clone disk, source drive, so this, this is exactly like the Windows interface. Pretty cool. So that's our source drive. Unlock these parts. Aren't you supposed to do that? <laughs> uh, awesome. I'm glad we went through all the trouble of making this boot disk and everything for it to not do jack with it. So I guess we're going to have to figure out how to turn off BitLocker and we're going to probably do that through Windows. And we're back. BitLocker is a Windows 10 weird thing. My research has led me to believe that in system and security we should see a BitLocker tab and I'm not seeing it when I search for it up here in the search index it doesn't find it either. So my next best hope is simply to look for device encryption. Device encryption settings, okay. Ah, turn off. So anyway, this was supposed to be from what I have read in the other menus we were in. Let's just go to BitLocker settings here. Here it is, I just couldn't see it before for whatever reason. Maybe I, maybe it was there and I just couldn't see it. Okay, screw that. Turn off, yes. And apparently it's gonna sit here for 100 years and decrypt. I can keep using my device, not for what I wanna use it for. So since we're here, and this has been an adventure already since they always are, let's just see how long it takes to decrypt this brand new computer with almost nothing on it. Thought I had the screensaver off so that wouldn't happen. But anyway, it's done. CA Disk Wizard again. And since we are now not encrypted, this should work fine. Let's find out. Clone disk. Once more. Yup. That's our source. The most important thing to not screw up is make sure we get the SSD, which we did. Okay. See if it continues to be all bitchy. Let's hope not. Hmm, since we got different hard drive sizes, I'm not sure what to do here. I think we're going to go manual because whatever partitions Dell has on the thing for backup partitions, we want to preserve those onto the SSD. So we'll just make them that big. So it looks like it's just going to automatically assign all these. So we're just going to say next. Proceed. Let's see if it gets all pissy again. Looks like it's probably going to be fine. Let's see how long it takes. I'm assuming that it's going to boot into its own little thing here and then actually do the cloning. I don't know if it cloned or not because obviously I wasn't standing here. So we'll see. Looks like it's done. Time to shut it down and make the SSD our only drive. Except it doesn't look that way at all. I don't see the SSD here at all. So let's restart it again and I will stand here this time and see what it does. Did not appear to do anything. Still don't see it. Let's go into disk management and see if it's even there. It says it's here. Just wonder if it doesn't know what to do with it. Okay, well let's shut it down and make it the only drive. That'll That'll clear things up. Okay, so the SSD is the only thing in there. I see a hard drive light flashing. It's booting really fast. Wow. That is a huge improvement. <laughs> wow. That is nuts. That was like 15 seconds down from a couple minutes. That was crazy. So anyway, that worked. I was going to explain while it was booting that I also plugged the SSD into the USB 0 port on the motherboard. And I'll, I'll flip it over and show you guys all that stuff here in a minute. But wow, that was incredibly fast. That was so fast, we're going to have to do it again. Just because I'm amazed. Yep, that'll do. Holy crap. 
<laughs> All right then. Let me uh, tear this thing down and I'll show you guys the end result inside. So this is what we ended up with inside it. SSD mounted, which you saw. I've got all the wires tucked into just that clip, which is awesome. I do have the factory terabyte hard drive just down here disconnected, but the wire is still in there and I've got the power for it just completely disconnected too. And I'm leaving it that way in case anything ever goes wrong. My dad can just call me and I can just tell him to plug this crap back in and unplug this and it'll at least be a functioning computer again. The only thing my dad is going to use this thing for is the internet. He's going to continue to use his Windows XP computer for everything else. And yes, I said Windows XP, not Vista, not Windows 8, not Windows 7, XP. Uh, my dad likes that computer. He's got it set up the way he wants. That's fine with me. He just is going to use this one for the internet, so there's some security from there on. And there it is, all reassembled. Massive performance increase installed, or at least as far as booting up and more than likely opening web browser and stuff. Stuff my dad will really notice and make him think this is much, much faster than his old one, which it is, and it should have been on paper. But that must be a really poochy hard drive they put in this thing, which I guess for 400 bucks you get what you get. Anyway, that's all there is to this one. As always, guys, thank you for stopping in. We'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.